Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr. This is episode 119, and it's being titled Empty Nest. And if you have any comments about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And the reason it's called Empty Nest is because last weekend I was uh, away. This is the reason that the podcast came out a little early last weekend. Uh, my, I brought my son to college, and he is now going to Western up in Bellingham. So, you know, obviously it's been a long time coming. Uh, he's apparently adjusting quite well. Uh, he was nervous about it before it, you know, before he came, or before he went there, and, uh, but, you know, apparently things are going well. Uh, he's meeting a lot of interesting people. He's doing some activities. He's playing Dungeons and Dragons, for instance, uh, and uh, you know seems to be liking his time there so far. Obviously, it's very very early. So uh, you know, over the weeks leading up to it, uh, I sort of like I could tell my, my my emotions were changing a little bit. Like you know, you always hear about. Um, about the emptiness thing and syndrome or whatever you want to call it and uh, you know how it affects people and I'm sure it ha- hits a lot of people differently uh, so this is all I can do is kind of give what I've been feeling um, I, you know kind of running up to it I kind of didn't really notice any change I wasn't like I mean I knew it was coming um, but at the time it, it wasn't really hitting me or anything. It wasn't until, like, a, the last couple of days, like, when we were really, like, you know, when he was starting to actually pack and do, like, these really last-minute things that sort of made me real, you know, kind of made me uh, realize, oh, okay, yeah, he's he's heading out. Uh, and, you know, this is his big adventure where, where he gets to, uh, you know, learn you know, what he likes and doesn't like, um, in terms of, you know, potential work and study. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's planning on doing biology, but who knows, you know, I mean, uh, he is going to be taking all kinds of other classes and maybe he'll fall in love with a different, uh, form of study. We'll see. Uh, I, I think he would be an excellent, uh, you know, biologist, but you know, maybe he likes something else. We'll see. Uh, so then, uh, on the day that, uh, we drove up, uh, we had actually a, a, a really good talk. Like we, uh, you know, I was expecting that we'd both just be listening to music or whatever, which is kind of like what we do on, on longer, longer trips. Uh, but you know, this time, you know, I, uh, I just asked him questions and started some conversations and just kind of wanted to feel out how, how he was feeling and, you know, see if, you know, give him some general advice or, or just, or, you know, or at least give him like what my experience was, um, and what, uh, Jennifer, my late wife's experiences were and just let him know, you know, that, you know, that it's okay to be nervous because I knew he was and, you know, and that he, uh, you know, that I have his back if he, if he needs to call me or needs anything, he, you know, he, if, you know, if it's urgent, of course, he should contact this, the college, but, you know, if, if he just needs something in general, he can call me. And, um, you know, we went over, like, a bunch of, you know, life experiences and, like, what he was expecting, what he was hoping for. Uh, it was, And it just felt really good. So um, I really, I really kind of appreciated that. Uh, and I... I I appreciate, I, I just appreciated him doing it because, you know, he, he's a teenager. He doesn't have to, <laughs> and he's 18. He doesn't have to talk to me, you know, like that. If he doesn't want to, he, he could just, you know, he could have just put his nose in a book or whatever, essentially. Um, but no, yeah, we had a pretty good conversation. And so we get there and it was uh, quite early. So he had some orientation type things to do. And it was sort of like late morning when it was happening, so we needed to get there. So we left quite early, and we um, got you know we started by doing the sign up for the orientation stuff. We had a little time before the orientation stuff began, so uh, we you know started unpacking 
and brought it to, found out where his room was. Uh, you know, we met his roommate who seems to be a really nice guy. He even offered to help, you know, schlep some of the stuff over. It turns out like if you did like this weird, like sign up thing, you could be in the closest parking lot but we hadn't done that um i don't think we'd really realized that that was kind of a thing or how important it might be so we were in just the general visitor parking lot which put it quite a bit further away so we had you know quite a bit of schlepping to do he he didn't have tons of stuff but he had you know he had enough he had you know a fair bit of clothing he had some sheets and towels and he had his computer and some general things uh you know it added up and so we, um, yeah, so we started schlepping that over and, you know, his friend came uh, and helped. Um, he had, we had, you know, we had his meeting, we had, we had a lunch. Um, there was going to be some, you know, some more stuff, uh, you know, a little bit of, like, there was like a family meeting in the afternoon separate from a student meeting. So the students were being taught, like, what were the different services available on campus, you know, where things were you know, how to contact them about this and that, that sort of thing. Meanwhile, we got a family orientation, which was interesting. And they sort of focused on like what to expect and like how to help your your student get through like this first phase of college, which is, I think, a very smart thing to do and very interesting. Like, like they said, um, for most students, their worst grades come in this quarter. They have a quarterly system. Uh, this quarter, the the fall quarter of their freshman year, and it's simply because the way that work is done in college is so different from most high schools, where you know with high schools you can you can put things off to the last minute, you can then you know kind of cram things in, you know projects can be done fairly late, um, and if you try to do that in college, it's just not going to work very well, you know because the subjects are harder. You're learning a lot. You're expected to, you know, keep up, and you're expected to study on your own. But even if they hear that as like a general bit, bit of advice, they don't, you know, it's hard to take that to heart until you actually experience it. And so a lot of students have like really like rough grades, like the first quarter. But usually they, you know, pull it in the second quarter and in the winter quarter, and it's simply because they learn to, uh, you know, they learn to uh, take better use of their time and so that was an that was an interesting thing and so they you know they said hey you know you might get some panicked calls or you know they might be frustrated um you know but just let them know you know to you know let them know what's happening let them know how they can you know manage their time and you know so that was really good um after that uh, then, you know, it was kind of getting towards evening and we were kind of planning on having dinner together, but it turns out like their dorm room, um, or their dorm, little dorm building. Cause there was like 12 small little buildings all together. And basically their building, um, we're, we're all going to go to, uh, dinner together. It was just to like the, one of the school cafeterias. Um, there's like 16,000 students. So there's actually multiple cafeterias sort of scattered. So I'm not sure which one they went to, but the idea was, you know, it wasn't, where they're going wasn't that important it was mostly just so that they could you know meet more more of their fellow dorm mates essentially and yeah so i went off i i found a brew pub and i had a really good beer and one of the worst slices of pizza i think i've ever had <laughs> uh it was truly horrific uh, memorably memorably bad actually um i i think i re- would have rather had like like a frozen pizza reheated in a microwave it would have been better actually so but uh but the beer was good <laughs> it was a stout and i like stouts so i like i like dark beers so and then was, and then it was like you know it was getting a little late and um i was you know exhausted so i usually go to bed i'm kind of a late uh, i'm a bit of a night owl but you know when i'm this tired and i knew i had, had to get up early so i uh, you know went to the went to the hotel and that I had booked and you know got ready for tomorrow and I think actually I was one of the few parents who actually was there on the second day because there wasn't really family orientation on the second day there was orientation for him though and it was specifically with professors trying to help them to like figure out um specifically what they should take this quarter to start getting some of their you know uh 
some of their basics out of the way and also like just starting like you can't sign up ahead of time but like figuring out what would likely be good to take in the next couple of quarters and so he did that and so he has uh 15 credits worth or 14 or 15 uh credits worth i think it's 14 um they try to get they they say like it average you need to average 15 but you can't always get 15 because some classes are worth more and less so sometimes you end up with 16 credits sometimes you end up with like 14 or uh for 14 15 um yeah so he ended up with like one less credit than the average but it's like not a big deal it's like what there's it's just what happens so he has like three cl three classes he has a math class uh he has a history class and he has a communications speech class and so he's taken a few of those i talked to him and uh, apparently things are going well um you know he the classes seem to be good he doesn't have like a favorite yet or anything like that and it's you know it's going well um anyway so i drove back the next you know the next day it was um so that was monday basically like you know he did his orientation and i was not allowed in actually at all i was kind of curious to watch but um, they actually asked me to to leave uh, the professors did, and I understand because it's the it's the relationship that they have with the student. They don't have a relationship, you know, a business relationship with me. They have a formal relationship with their student. So fair enough. Uh, and there were other students there too, so it would have been a little awkward, you know. Uh, it wasn't just about my son. I, there were other students there too. So fair enough. So I did other things. Uh, to, went walked around the campus a bit. Took a took a took a break. And that charged my phone. Stuff like that. Uh, you know, so then we met up for lunch and then I headed home and it felt a little weird, uh, driving home cause, uh, you know, it's a long drive and I've, I've done long drives solo, but not since college really. Uh, I, I went to college in Tacoma, uh, and I, my folks, uh, home was, you know, in near Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And so, you know, over the course of those four years, I got kind of used to doing, you know, multi-hour drives solo, but I hadn't really done that for, uh, since then. So I drove home and, uh, Monday evening traffic was tough. I tried to get through Seattle, Tacoma before traffic got bad, but yeah, it was already pretty bad by the time I got there. So it took, took a lot longer to get home than it had the day before, you know, when we were leaving on a super early on a Sunday morning. So yeah, I uh, got back home and said hi to the cats and, uh, you know, and he's going to miss the cats. So, and I'm sure they're going to miss him because he, you know, they, he often let them sleep on his bed and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. And the house is now quiet. So th I think that is sort of like what really felt, uh, weird to me in terms of like the emptiness thing. Um, yeah, I just miss him in general. Um, but it definitely makes the house feel different too. And it's kind of, so it's kind of a double whammy, you know, it's like, I, I do miss him. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not regretful or anything like that. I'm, I'm perfectly happy because I know that this is what he needs to do to sort of get ready for adult life. Um, uh, but I'm, but you know, it, I do miss him. And then, um, the house definitely feels weird. Just there's never anyone here. Uh, now and so it feels strange uh, it's very quiet and uh, like you know one sometimes when I'm getting ready for bed I'm I expect to like check in on him make, make sure everything's going well and there's you know the, and his room's empty so uh, and yeah it just it's it's a weird feeling so like it's I think that I didn't really realize, but it is sort of that double whammy of, of those two things. It's, you know, missing the person who's left, but it's also, you know, the fact that the house feels very quiet and it's very empty. Um, you know, when we bought the house, my wife and I didn't even know we were going to have a kid because it was almost impossible for her to get pregnant, but then she did. Um, and then we had Declan. We were very happy with that. Um, you know, we grew up and so we've been here a long time and the house was a you know, is pretty good sized. Um, and it felt even a little empty with Je when Jen died, um, a few years back. Uh, you know, but I still, but you know, Declan was here, I was here and we had the cats and now it's just me and the cats and the house feels pretty damn big. Uh, so yeah, 
the other thing I've been realizing just beyond these sort of empty nest feelings is I've never lived alone before, which is kind of strange to think about. I've never lived in a house by myself. I mean, so, you know, of course, grew up with my parents and my sister, went off to college, um, but I, w I never had a solo room at, ho at college. Um, had a group house thing going on um, for the, uh, the Langlo house a freshman year. And then with some of my friends that I met from there, we knew we could live together, so we just did um, house living together. And we did that, you know, the other three years. Um, by then I was dating Jennifer, and um, so when I did a little bit of extra college, we moved down to Sacramento together, and then we got married, and we, uh, yeah, we, uh, and I've been living, I'd been living with her ever since, and by the time of she died, of course, Declan, you know, was a teenager, so, and then I, I've just been living with Declan the last few years, and now I'm in a house all by myself, uh, which... Uh, is a little nerve nervey. Like it feels strange to be like this alone. Like, and I can I can see why why it's actually slightly dangerous. Like, you know, like if I have an accident, if I can't reach my phone, or if I get a, if I get knocked unconscious or something, I could be injured for a long time. And you know who you know until someone checked in on me, it's like, I might be like stuck somewhere. You know, I might like, if my leg was injured, but my phone was up like on a shelf, I might be stuck there for a day or two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Until, you know, until, um, I got checked in on by my girlfriend or a neighbor or something. I don't know. And just, and it does, it also feels just very quiet in general. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, and I'm not sure how these feelings are going to adjust over time. Like, you know, is it, am I going to feel alone more keenly or is it going to like, well, I just sort of get used a little more used to it. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. It's, uh, it's yet another interesting and yet, and not altogether pleasant part of life. But, you know, it, but it's something that needs to be born. And I don't really have anything else to say about it. So I, I might revisit this in a while because I think this is all very fresh and it could be, it could be in flux, you know. So we'll see uh, how things are going in, in a while maybe. But I think for now, I think this is enough for today's episode. <laughs> And I have to get back to writing because we do need to wrap up the story that uh, that I've been writing for the last few weeks. And then I already have another story in mind that I'm looking forward to writing as well. So thank you for listening. And if you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And we'll see you next week. Words of Music, copyright 2019, Cryptobiography, LLC, all rights reserved. <laughs>